So 4.5 is observational studies and experiments. We started this before the break by watching that uh, video about the um, power punch, um, doing that strength game. Um, so we talked about observational studies versus experiments. How do you know if something is an observational study versus if it's an experiment? Yeah, good. So an experiment has a treatment imposed. Um, uh, an observational study, you're just watching to see and collecting data, okay? So the goal of an observational study, we might be wanting to collect some uh, data about a group. We might want to be comparing groups. Or maybe we're trying to examine the relationship between an X and a Y variable, and we're trying to see if maybe there's some sort of correlation. But here's the problem with observational studies. They do not allow cause and effect to be uh, determined. So correlation does not imply causation. Uh, we've talked about that before. And so that's why we have to be a little bit careful about observational studies. When we do experiments, we can actually get causation. Okay. So we talked about confounding. Confounding was um, those variables that might be influencing your results. And so in that first lesson that we talked about, there was an observational study where we asked teenagers how often they eat with their family and what their grades are in school. And we saw that there was a correlation. But does that mean that eating with your family is going to make your grades change? Not necessarily, okay? So it's not appropriate to say that that is what's going on. What are some other things that we talked about? Do you guys remember what we said could also be affecting that relationship? You're eating with your family and you're getting better grades. Or you're not eating with your family and you're getting worse grades. What are some other variables that might be affecting your grades? And the fact that you can eat with your family. <clears throat> not being home? You have a job, so you're not home uh, to eat with your family. You're also not able to study, right? Good. So those are um, some of the things we talked about. And so we said, oops, there we go. So we said that um, we don't know which variable is causing the difference, okay? We don't know if it's because you have a part-time job, if it's because you're in extracurricular activities, if it's because you have certain amount of time available to study, that kind of thing. That is all called confounding, okay? So that's the first vocabulary word on the 4.5 is the confounding. Um, when we have two variables that are associated in such a way that their effects on the response variable cannot be distinguished from each other. So our response variable in this particular example was your grade in school. The explanatory variable was um, having family dinner. But there's all this other stuff in the middle that's influencing this, okay? So that's called a confounding variable. These are all confounding variables. It's variables that are kind of messing with our data. Here's the, uh, it's got two stars next to it. Observational studies cannot definitively show a cause and relationship, a cause and effect relationship because of the fact that we have other variables, these confounding variables. That's why we can't do that with an observational study. So with an experiment, we try to limit those confounding variables, okay? And so that's where we're kind of moving now into experiments, actually doing experiments, okay? All right, so let's discuss this question real quick. In a study of more than 4,700 children, researchers from Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center found that those children whose mothers smoked during pregnancy were more than twice as likely to develop ADHD as children whose mothers had not smoked. Based on this study, it is, reason is it reasonable to conclude that a mother smoking during pregnancy causes an increase in the risk of ADHD in children? Do you guys think that the mother smoking during the pregnancy is what is causing the ADHD? Probably not. This is an observational study, okay? We just observed whether the mother smoked and then whether the kid had ADHD. We didn't go and be like, hey, guess what? We're going to make you smoke during pregnancy, okay? We didn't do an experiment. Um, what are some other factors that could have led to the ADHD that 
are not the smoking. Yes. It's hereditary. Okay, very good. ADHD, maybe it's hereditary. Maybe there was something about the, uh, the mother and the, you know, the family history that caused the ADHD. Good. What else? Is there anything, uh, anything that you guys associate with people that smoke that could have possibly influenced the child? What do you, um, people who smoke, are they usually healthy? Mm-hmm. Probably not, okay? Uh, maybe that's stereotypical, I don't know. Maybe they're eating their avocado toast and then, and then smoking their cigarette, I don't know. But who knows, maybe they're going to the gym and then, you know, vaping on the way home. I don't know, maybe that's what they do. But um, maybe there's this level of health that is associated with the ADHD not necessarily the smoking. So we don't really know. We can't say for sure that it's the smoking. It could be some other health factors, okay? Um, We can obviously see that there maybe is a relationship, but we don't know that it's a cause and effect. All right, cool. So the easiest way to identify confounding in an observational study is to think about other variables that are associated, kind of like we just did there. Um, and so in the smoking, there could be other factors, health, the way that they eat. There's lots of other hereditary things like that with the families and their, um, eating with the families and the grades again, other factors. That's all confounding. Confounding is kind of a big word in stats. Okay. All right. So experiments, what is a treatment? What is a treatment when you're doing an experiment? What is a treatment? If I'm gonna do an experiment and I'm gonna give a treatment, what does that mean? Just what do y'all know about treatments of ex- in experiments? Maybe find a solution? Yeah, good. So it's like what we're trying to find a solution for. Okay, good, good. So if, um, if I'm going to do an experiment, I'm going to impose a treatment. Does that mean that I'm going to make people do something? Yeah. So the treatment is usually like making them do something or take something or something like that. So the treatment is how you, how you like influence their, um, their actions. Okay. And the whole point is to see how they do. Okay. The people or the individuals in the experiments are called the experimental units. If they're people, we just call them subjects. Okay. So um, again, just vocabulary words that you'll see as we go through. All right, you guys, do you know what a control group is? Tell me about a control group. The one that stays the Good. So a control group is usually the ones that stay the same. They're, uh, they're kind of going to keep doing what they've always done so that we can compare to them. Um, so here's an experiment. Mr. Luckow's class wants to investigate if caffeine affects pulse rate. So how fast your heart is pumping. Is that associated with caffeine? So one of his students pr- proposes this plan. All right, here's, the, here's what we're going to do. Every student is going to measure their pulse rate. We're going to give every student 12 ounces of cola. We're going to wait 15 minutes. And then we're going to have everybody look at their pulse rate after 15 minutes. And then we're going to compare your initial and your final pulse rate. What is wrong with this experiment? There's no control group. group, Okay. Everybody's going to get the caffeine. Everybody's going to get the cola. How do I know if the caffeine made the difference? What other factors might have caused the pulse rates to change? What are some other things that could have caused the pulse rates to change that was not the caffeine? What if, wait, we had everybody drink the cola and then we all got up and like went out in the hallway and did an activity? Maybe it wasn't the caffeine. Maybe it was the activity, right? So we don't really know what's going on. So in this particular situation, we also have to think about that when you give soda to people, there's sugar in it. Do you think your heart responds to sugar? Your heart rate responds to sugar? Probably, yeah. 
That's why they say kids, you know, who eat a bunch of sugary stuff are all hyper, right? So, again, confounding the sugar. Um, maybe they just had a really exciting statistical lesson, and they were just so excited about what they were learning. I don't know. Maybe that's it. Had to be it. So, again, there's confounding here. That's a problem. So we need a control group. So what would that look like if we had a control group in this experiment? What would that look like if we included a control group? What would we do to fix that? Uh, separate a group of students that don't get treatment. Perfect. So some of the students are going to get the cola, some of the students are not, okay? That would be a control group, very good. So control group, it gives us a baseline for comparing, it gives us something to compare. A control group may get an inactive treatment, what's that called? If it's an inactive treatment, so it's like we fake the treatment, placebo. that's a placebo, okay, good. And we're going to want to make sure that we be careful there too. We want to make sure that everybody is treated the same way. Everybody's going to get some cola. So here's the deal. We're not just going to give some cola and some don't get it. Because what if the people who drink the soda, they think, oh, my heart rate's supposed to get higher. And then it like gets them excited that their heart rate should be going up. But then the people who didn't drink the cola are like, oh, I didn't get no cola. Well, this sucks. I wanted some cola, right? So now their heart rate's really down. So we're going to give them regular soda and caffeine soda, a placebo, okay? So both groups are going to think that they're drinking the soda so that we're taking out that possible effect, all right? So that is called um, placebo effect. One thing about control groups real quick, you don't always have to have a control group. It could be that we have two different treatments. Maybe some people get, I don't know, Coca-Cola, and some people get, I don't know, uh, not Sprite, because that's caffeine-free, Dr. Pepper. So maybe we're doing Coca-Cola versus Dr. Pepper. That's fine, as long as we have something to compare to, okay? We just have to have something to compare to. All right, so we've got the kid. This is talking about the placebo effect. We've got the kids who get the regular cola. Woohoo! the kids who get the caffeine, if I tell them which one they're getting, I'm not taking into consideration the placebo effect. So I don't tell them. I just say, here, here's some, something to drink. Drink this. I don't know. I'm not going to tell you which one you got. Okay. So we want to make sure that we are taking into consideration that placebo effect. Placebo effect is that you will respond to treatment if you think you're getting a treatment. Again, I'm assuming most of you guys know this kind of stuff. Hopefully, if you don't, you'll tell me. So uh, sugar pills, those are the most common placebos. They're just basically, they look just like the treatment that you're taking, but um, they're just fake. It's just sugar pill, basically. There's also placebo surgeries, okay? So there's actually a really famous surgery that they did on uh, people who had strokes, um, so people had strokes and they, they thought that maybe going into the brain and injecting a solution into the part of the brain that had the stroke. So basically a stroke is a part of your brain kind of dies a little bit. Um, and so that's why certain parts of your body don't work or your speech is um, impaired. So they did this experiment where they went in and they basically took off of, you know, the people's top of their skull. And they injected either the actual new treatment that they were thinking about, or they just injected saline, right, sugar, or sugar water, into the part of the brain that had the stroke. And then they put their skull back on, sewed them back up, all that fun stuff. The crazy thing that happened was that everybody got better. The, the stroke symptoms got better. And they found out that what happened was actually the air getting on the brain, right? So you take the skull off, air hitting the brain directly actually allowed the brain to start to heal a little bit. So in, in doing this experiment, they realized there was an actual, a, a whole nother thing they could do. 
So now there are some treatments out there where some stroke victims, they'll just go and they'll, they'll go into like ICU and they'll just take off their skull and let their skull be off for a few days to let the air touch their brain. And so it's kind of crazy that that was the byproduct of this experiment that they did. So placebo surgery is actually a thing. Um, so again, you got to think you're getting the treatment though, okay? And that is a big thing. If we tell people, hey, here's the treatment, hey, here's the sugar pill, this placebo thing doesn't work, okay? All right, double blind and single blind. Are you guys familiar with those terms when you're talking about experiments? What does it mean if you have a double blind experiment? What does that mean? Does that mean we got two blind people? No, not necessarily. What does it mean, Austin? Like the people conducting the experiment and then the people getting the experiment. Good. So in this, in a double blind experiment, the people that are getting the treatment, so those subjects that are getting the treatment, and the people that are giving the treatment don't know which one is getting the treatment, who is getting the treatment, okay? Now somebody has to know. Okay. It's not like we're going to take the actual pills and the sugar pills and put them in a bag and then be like, hey, pick one. Good luck. Like we're going to track who has it somewhere else. But why is that important? Why is it that if I'm giving the treatment, why is it important that I don't know what I'm giving out? Bias. Yeah. So it's to avoid bias, right? So like, let's say I find out that, um, you know, giving out a certain type of candy can help you on a test, which that's actually true. If you're chewing gum or sucking on something when you're taking a test and you do that, you did that during your review, that can actually help you just so you know. Uh, but it's not like I would be like, hey, everybody today, we're going to take a test and everybody's going to get some candy. Okay. I know that some of the candy has the active ingredient that's going to help you focus, and some of the candy doesn't. It's a placebo. But if I know which one is which, then maybe I'm like, hey, you want some of the good candy? Here's some candy for you. You want some candy? Here's some good candy, right? So now you like you can tell by the way that I'm acting which one. Do you guys, does, do any of you watch Grey's Anatomy? Yeah? You've seen Grey's Anatomy? So the Alzheimer's um, trial way back in the early seasons when Meredith Grey was doing the Alzheimer's trial with Derek Shepard. And like Meredith knew which one Derek was administering, the doctor was administering to the patients, but Derek didn't know. So Meredith would make note, this is the active treatment or not the active treatment. She would give it to the doctor, not tell him which one, and then he would actually perform the procedure. That's double blind. Single blind is just if the person getting it doesn't know, but the doctor knows or the person doing it does. Okay? So that's double blind, single blind. Um, all right, placebos, do they work? One study found that 42% of balding men maintained or increased the amount of hair on their head when they took a placebo. In another study, researchers zapped the wrist of 24 test subjects with a j painful jolt of electricity. Then they rubbed a cream with no active medicine on the subject's wrist and told them that the cream should help soothe the pain. When the researchers shocked them again, eight subjects said they experienced significantly less pain. But it was just lotion, basically. Okay? They thought they were not supposed to get a, a worse shock, and so they didn't. Um, depression, it's the, that's the most common placebo, is depression and anxiety. You tell people you're supposed to feel better, they actually do start to feel better. It's crazy. All right, you guys, so we're going to do an example. Here it is. If you flip over your page, here's our example. Do you want another brownie? Researchers invited 186 university students to take part in an experiment. While the students were watching a video, they were given brownies to snack on. Unknown to the students, the size and the number of brownies differed from student to student. There were three different sizes, an 8-gram, a 16-gram, and a 32-gram 
brownie and four different quantities. They were either given one, two, four, or eight brownies on their plate. Researchers measured the total weight of brownies consumed and whether or not each student finished the brownies. Okay. All right, what might be a confounding variable in this experiment? What might be something that's going to influence the results of this particular experiment? Right, okay, perfect, appetite. Whether or not the students had eaten before they came into this, that's perfect, very good. All right, so appetite. What else? What else might be confounding our results? Absolutely. Whether you like brownies or not, right? We're giving everybody brownies, but what if you're like, I'm not eating no brownie. I don't even like those. Okay, good. If the student likes brownies. What else? Anything else you can think of that could possibly influence these results? Those are the top two that I thought of. I, I couldn't really think of anything else. Can you guys? No. I can't really think of why they would or would not eat the brownie. They're allergic. Oh, okay. Oh, there you go. Maybe an allergy. Maybe they're like, I want to eat the brownie, but I can't because I'm allergic. Very good. Nice. Food allergies. Good. Anything else you guys can think of? Okay. So definitely some things that could have uh, influenced the results. All right, what were the explanatory variables and what are the number of passable values for each variable? Possible values, not passable. Uh, what were the explanatory variables? There's actually a few. Basically, what are some of the variables that were used? Good, very good. So the size, and there were actually three values. There was an eight gram, a 16 gram, and a 32 gram, okay? So size was one. Uh, quantity, that was the other. And there were four values for the quantity there was either one, two, four, or eight. Okay. So if I think about every possible combination that could have been given to these students, how many different treatments are there in this entire experiment? So if you look at the variables and how many different options each have, it kind of helps you to answer this question. A student could have gotten an eight, the eight gram brown, blah, 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 the eight gram brownies, and they could have just gotten one. That's one treatment. They could have gotten the eight gram brownies with two brownies. That's two different treatments. Eight gram with four, eight gram with eight. So the, that's four different treatments for the eight gram brownies. They could have gotten the sixteen with each of the quantities, and then the thirty-two with each of the quantities. So if you just basically take the fact that there's three values here and four values here and multiply them, that's how many total treatments there are for this particular experiment. So we have three sizes times four quantities. That's 12 treatments. So every student could get one of the 12 treatments, basically. Does that make sense? All right, cool. Um, was there a control group in this experiment? Was there an actual control group, like a baseline? There was not. There was no control group. Every group got some treatment. Okay, so there wasn't really an actual control group. 
No. Every student got some treatment. And that's okay. Obviously, if there was a control group, that would be that, you know, you don't get brownies. Well, obviously, if you don't get brownies, you're not going to eat a brownie. So, we didn't have to do that. That was okay. All right, guys. Is this a double or... I don't know what a sable blinded is, but that should be single blinded. Is this a double or single blinded experiment? What do you think? Yeah, this is going to be single blinded. So the students don't really know because it says unbeknownst to the students. So the students don't know the fact that the, their brownies are a little different. You know, they're all in tune with the movie. But the people giving them the brownies, they obviously know if they're getting one, two, four, or eight brownies, okay? So this is a single blinded because the people giving brownies know who got which ones cool yes yes you can distinguish causation in an experiment so as long as you do an experiment and I think that's actually going to be our that yeah that's going to be in 4.7 We'll talk about how do you know it is for sure. Um, but it's basically if you do an experiment that is designed very well and you get statistically significant results, then you have proved causation. Yep. All right, last question for this one. Was the placebo effect accounted for in this experiment? Was the placebo effect accounted for in this experiment? No? 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 Yeah, I don't really know how you would give a fake brownie. So, yeah, there's no placebo here. Everybody got an active treatment of brownies. Okay. So, no. Everyone received active treatment of brownies. Cool. And everybody got the same treatment in regards to they were all watching the same movie and they're all in the same space. So like Temperatures all the same, their environments all the same, so that's all taken into account. What questions do you guys have about all that kind of stuff? It's just again, tons of just little bitty vocabulary. So cool.